Um, so I think we can probably start. We have our own introductions in the slides, so I don't want to jump ahead. They're very fun introductions. So, But I, just very quickly, I can just say my name is Catanese. Uh, I usually tell people it rhymes with mayonnaise or bolognese. So <laughs> Catanese, bolognese, Catanese, mayonnaise. Um, and I am the assistant project manager for Stowe's. A uh, comprehensive plan. Unfortunately, Jen couldn't make it today. She sends her regards. She had a family emergency um, come up, so she will be here at some point later on. And I'm Austin. I'm the assistant um, person on the project. Um, I kind of recently started at JM Goldson, um, and I'm super excited to get started with this process. It's yeah. going to be a lot of fun. Great. Awesome. So I can go ahead and start the presentation. Scoop behind you, Michael. Okay, perfect. Um, so as I mentioned, I am oops, some of quarters there. Catanese bus, mayonnaise bolognese. Uh, Jen is our project manager for Stowe's comprehensive plan, and Austin, who is our primary assistant. So we will be focusing on the entirety of the pro of the project with you guys. Um, so you'll pretty much see our faces throughout the whole process. Um, before we go into this, actually, um, I would love for Austin and I to sort of do a little bit of a larger introduction as to who we are so that you can get a sense for the team that you're working with and you're not the only one sort of explaining yourselves to more depth. Um, so I have been with Jim Goldson a little less than a year now, actually. I have a five-month-old at home, so I was on maternity leave for a little bit and I just came back not that long ago. Um, so if I slur my words or something happens, just know that I'm, I'm okay, it's just a lack of sleep. Um, and I am originally from Boston, and I do this work because I love the ability to bring community together and to really plan and design things in a way that's really human-centered and, um, you know, that brings the functionality behind the design of things. So people want to be together. People want to live in a beautiful environment. So why not make sure to plan and design for that? So that's sort of my why as to doing this work. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And I, um, I kind of started at the firm recently. And so I am really loving like digging into all of these community processes. Whenever I was asked like in school growing up what I wanted my superpower to be. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Whenever I was asked in school what I wanted for a superpower. I always said flying. Um, and I never really could figure out why I thought it was kind of like a cop out because everybody says flying. But I really love maps and I love seeing places from above. I love seeing how different communities fit together, what their transportation looks like, how people get around, where they go, what they like about it, what they love about it. Um, all those things come together, I think, in what I love about comprehensive planning. It's like kind of rare chance to look at a whole community and get people together. And I think that's something that's super important, especially after the pandemic, is there are not a lot of opportunities to actually get people together and talk about like, what do you really love mm -hmm. about this community? Because there are lots of smaller planning initiatives or local area focused things, but to come together and actually talk about what you really love and what you really want to focus on as a whole community is kind of a rare special treat. Yeah. So that's what really draws me to this work. Absolutely. So we're really looking forward to what you guys are really looking forward to in this project, in this plan. So uh, just to get into it, if you would like to go around the table, and you've already introduced yourselves, but if you don't mind doing that again, mm -hmm. and sharing one word to describe um, Stowe, and then one investment that you wish to see in your community. Let's start backwards, maybe. Start with Courtney. <laughs> <laughs> The least granny. Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if I have one word answer, but... Um, you could use a phrase if one word is not enough. Yeah, I think we're uh, still a rural, agricultural, small tenant. And... I would like to see us develop into a more 21st century life. Okay. So I think the investment would be in um, how we 
show our face to the outside world. Sure. Yeah. Also, thank you. Mm -hmm. Valerie, you want to go? <laughs> sure. Um, so the word I'm thinking today for how I was described, so, um, and this does probably depend on the day you get me, um, it's probably balance. Mm -hmm. um, I think we talk a lot in Stowe about balancing yeah. open space and, and development. Um, and right now, I mean, I'm excited about this comprehensive planning process because I think we need to recalibrate where we are, where <clears throat> that balance is. Um, so it would certainly uh, make our jobs more focused if we better understood and really took the temperature of people to understand what that balance is right now that, that we're after. Um, I'll be a little more literal with the second one. <laughs> That's um, okay. In fest, so uh, there are a few things I would like to see in Stowe. And number one, when I think of investment, it's um, figuring out a water uh, a solution for our business districts. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's but that's an investment that's pretty pretty key in my mind. Um, and then others is you know really just a lot of a lot better um, uh, connectivity between neighborhoods mm -hmm. and uh, the region. So more uh, in terms of bike trails um, and pedestrian um, crossings, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Honestly, Hector? Uh, one word to describe, though, I would say open space is a good word to describe it. And as far as investment, sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those pedestrians and would love to see more sidewalks to be able to walk around, so. Sure, perfect, thank you. It's hard for me because I've been in Stowe for 62 years, so I've seen a lot, you know, and Stowe, to me, is home. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it has really lost it, um, some of its rural character because it's become really more of a suburban um, place for people who travel in and away from for work. Mm -hmm. So, and the investment is water, public water supply, definitely. Great, thank you. Coach headed. Well, I can't even one word either. But <laughs> I, I would say, I, I think it is uh, uh, uniquely rural. Uh, it's a, it's sort of a uniquely rural area. Uh, when, when I was looking around after I joined this committee and I was looking around and looking at their rathas for surrounding towns, I realized more than I ever really had just how much open space we do have relative to other towns in this area and just how much less um, uh, industrial or retail space we have compared to other towns. We've sort of effectively created the retail for the open space, and, and I Think that was intentional. So we're kind of so we're kind of unique um, as far as investment goes. Uh, I, I totally agree with everybody who said water. It all flows from water. But mm -hmm. what I put down is I would like to see us figure out ways to create uh, as best we can more economically and, and demographically diverse housing mm -hmm. without making our property taxes any worse than they already are. Thank you. Hillary? I'm Laurie. Um, I think um, one word I would use to disguise, I think we're an exceptionally invested community. We have a lot of um, people who are very invested in creativity. Creativity? 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 Invested in our community sort of in different ways. Um, and so one investment I hope it, I guess I'm looking for in this process is, um, which I think is quite pent on water, but is creating spaces where we can um, bring some kind of space groups, uh, groups together um, in a way that we can actually get to know each other and have that opportunity to get to know each other. It's so not just sort of you see each other passing. Mm -hmm. It's a community space and a nice but fun. So that's one investment. Awesome. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, I would be in this lower scenic, and I think it is unique in that we are so close to Boston, but yet have retained 
some ballots, and clearly are trying to figure out how to continue that. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with Lori. I think from a festival standpoint, we need, it would be great to figure out how to have places for community. I do agree with the water because part of the vision the playing board had of Lower Village is trying to create both a retail center and a community um, place to engage. Um, so I think water is probably a price of admission to try to encourage that type of development, but I would love to take it beyond that and say, trying to figure out how to um, proactively drive that vision versus reactively wait for whatever comes. Um, so. Awesome, thank you. Michael? Uh, I would say, first where they came to my head was hidden, mm -hmm. in that a lot of people around don't know of Stowe, and if they do, it's generally for the apple orchards that we have. And I didn't know of Stowe until seeing the job posting for <laughs> So um, that can also be a good thing. It's a hidden gem. Um, it has its own unique flavor, its own personality, its own sense of clarity. Um, so it can be a good thing, and it could also be an opportunity as well. Um, and one investment I'd like to see is more into placemaking. Um, we have some defined neighborhoods, like Village, Town Center, Gleasondale, but I think we could invest more in creating a stronger section or way of creating, like you're in Gleasondale, you're in the lower village mm -hmm. and have that strong sense of you're not just anywhere else in Massachusetts, you're in this community. Also, place making, very good. Thank you. Alrighty, so before we actually begin with the actual presentation, I wanted to make sure to give you guys kudos because you have done an amazing job at making sure that you are looking forward to proactively working on what you said you were going to do in your last plan. So just to put it out there, you've completed 64% or are in progress of completing 64% of your goals, which is a, a high feat. So I, I want to give you guys a kudo and, and acknowledge that as well. Um, and then it just basically comes from a general <laughs> area within the comprehensive plan. So transportation, land use, open space, things of that nature. All right, so you all filled out the project launch clarifier before we came here to share your hopes, your what you're curious about, what you think are challenges. And so we'll sort of highlight some of the things that we saw throughout those answers. So your hopes for this plan really goes into reflecting the input of the Stowe's boards and committees. So making sure that the folks who are sort of leading the way have an input in the process. Uh, it'll be easy to, and readable and get younger people involved. So not only do we want to make sure that it's a document that is livable and that is understandable for folks who may not necessarily be within this process, but also so for folks who are the next generation, then that they know what's going on and how to really push that forward. It will be possible to update it regularly and easily. Yes, like I said, it's a livable document. This is the best way to do things because things change in good ways as well as bad ways, but we're hoping it's good ways. And so just being um, flexible to that. It will help create a vision for new housing types, absolutely. So it's really what you wanna make of it. So housing is definitely one of those pieces. It will support a vision for public spaces and culture. Again, very reflected from what you guys have said. It will adequately and effectively support affordable housing. Yes, that is something that a lot of communities are struggling with right now. So it's good to have those there. What you're most curious to learn. What is the community most passionate about? What do those have, that haven't yet spoken up believe? Absolutely, you, we all have our own perspectives, so it's good to see what other people are thinking. What kind of communication and involvement do residents want to have with the town? I agree, you are you know, special in that you are already involved with what's happening in the town and you are putting your time in and effort. What do folks, you know, what kind of level of, of effort do they want to put in? Can they not you know, participate for some reasons? Are there barriers? Uh, what kind of strategies will come out of the plan? Absolutely, this, this plan is about strategies and goals and what you guys want to see for Stowe. So that'll be a part of it. And what has changed since the last plan? 
also very interesting. We will definitely base some of the strategies and goals that we have for you all from the last plan that you guys also have worked on. Greatest challenges. I feel like I want to make this a little bit more interactive. So does someone want to read off of the presentation so it's not just me speaking to you? I will. Sure. Yeah. Property tax rates have been going up, keeping the cell affordable for seniors, balancing development with availability of town services, particularly water, mm -hmm. creating more spaces to build connections. Some people don't want change or don't believe it when they see it. Attracting businesses to take some of the revenue burden of housing. Absolutely. So all things that you've all mentioned actually during our initial conversation. So all very important things as well, making sure that the community can, can support the folks who have been here in the community for a long time so that we have you know the, that strong connection um, and creating spaces to build connections. Again, we want to know who our seniors are. We want to know who the youth are, who are our neighbors. So definitely making spaces for that. And some opportunities. Anyone want to read this one? That's where Jake could go. <laughs> Creating a long-term vision that supports older residents and families. The plan is an opportunity to bring the community together, keeping our open space, reuse of historic buildings in downtown revitalization. High civic engagement is a strength to emphasize. Absolutely. So those are, I would agree, huge opportunities that we want to take advantage of and really hold on to during this process. So. What exactly is a comprehensive plan? What are the fundamentals of it? How familiar is this group with what a comprehensive plan is and sort of the details of that? I, I read all the materials that Valerie provided to us. Mm -hmm. I've never done this before, so I'm still not quite sure what yeah. we do. Heck, that's where I... Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. So this is something that I think Jen was really passionate about explaining, but I, I'll, I'll try to do justice to her, to her explanation. So we build a structure, as in we will guide you through this process and hold your hand so that you don't feel stressed out about anything, so that you don't feel like, oh, I'm not understanding this process. And you'll be like the puppy in this image and you'll be nice and safe around this fenced in open space as you all want to save and, pres and preserve so that you can have fun while also taking advantage of this process. So. The comprehensive plan is really a long range plan that designs what you want to see for the, the town of Stowe. So it's about preserving open spaces um, for development, um, transportation, anything that you want to see within the next 10 years and how to really put forward st strategies to get there. So it's really the process is what you make of it, basically. So if you want to see more of something specific, unless you say something, we won't really know. So I would really encourage you all to sort of participate as much as possible but we will be there again, as to a little fence indicates. <laughs> and so the key components of a comprehensive plan are existing conditions profile. So what is still now? What exists for housing? What exists for transportation, for land use, for open space? Community vision statement. So what do you want to see as a community for Stowe? Goals for each core theme. Again, this is what we want. How do you get there? What are the goals that we want to attain? The strategies, how do you get to those goals? It's great to have goals and to have ideas for what you want, but how do you actually get there? And then a future land use map. So I'll show you an example, but it's basically a color as you go example of what you want to see in the town without there being exact boundaries. So if you want to see a specific thing, let's say down the street, we'll put a whole like a little circle around it. This is what I want to see in the, the downtown. Okay, so this is an example summary for existing conditions. As I mentioned before, it's really about what exists now so that we can take from that and learn from it and go forward. So you'll see things like demographics, you'll see things like trends that you want to um, learn more about. So there'll be a whole bunch of graphs and data and all that stuff that we can look at, but there'll also be maps and other more visual fun things to look at as well. Yeah. 
Is, is the consulting firm going to provide us with this information? Yes, this is all, uh, yeah, this is all on us. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, there is a data request that Valerie and Michael have so kindly filled out for us. So we obviously need information from the town <coughs> to do our due yeah. diligence and do it re correctly. So we do have data from, from you folks. Yeah, this part is part of the fence that we yeah. build. Like there's a lot of work in a comprehensive plan. We're not gonna lie and say it's easy. <laughs> But we can divide the work a little bit so that we do a lot of the clerical stuff behind the scenes. We'll pull the data, we'll do some analysis, we'll make nice charts, and we'll help guide all of the social engagements so that you all, with the community, can do the fun part, which yeah. is the, the dreaming and the talking with your neighbors mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So this, don't worry about it. Yeah. We'll, we'll pull the data for you. It's, <laughs> a, it's just a fun way for you to sort of see your town in a different way. Absolutely. So vision statement, this was Ipswich vision statement. Really you want it to be something short and concise and really try to capture what you want for, for the community. So their vision statement was, um, Ipswich in 2035 is scenic coastal community defined by its open space and natural resources, first period historic resources, vibrant local businesses, strong schools and community partners, and a welcoming social fabric for residents and visitors of all ages, races, ethnicities, and backgrounds. So it's kind of a general, very general idea of what you want to see for your community, but it really captures what the essence of what you want to see is. So it's definitely, we'll work on this when, it, when we get there, but it, don't get bogged down by like these specifics when we do. The goals statement. So this is again, an example of some goals. So we can be very specific about how much housing we want to see, for example, if there are any specific water resources projects that we want to see for, move forward, um, you know, schools, transportation, any of that kind of stuff is really, this is where it goes. And this is the land use, future land use map that I was talking about. So as you see, there's a lot of shading, there's a lot of like circling around. Um, that's really, again, so that we're not being specific, like we're not saying this specific parcel will be a park. That's great, but really it's about visioning what you want to see for the general the general community. So you'll get something that looks like that specifically for stuff. Strategies. So a lot of it, like I mentioned before, will be based on where you've been, based on the previous plan and where we want to go. So if there are some open strategies and goals from the previous plan that you feel strongly about pursuing again or continuing to pursue, we will make sure to include that. But it's really about how do you get to your percentage of housing availability? How do you get to your um, restoration of transportation or access to more water supply? So it's getting really concrete about how do you get to these goals? And so you'll see that there's like specific little icons that sort of help guide you there. So the vision and goals identified. So how do we actually learn what we want to push forward in the stove? How do we learn what the community wants? That's really where the engagement comes in. So you guys are just a piece of the puzzle. We wanna make sure that we're encouraging the whole community to participate and giving their feedback about what they wanna see for still. And so you'll see here community conversations, um, info and structure, explore interrelationships, inter and tease out values. So you'll see like there's a forum, there's some surveys that we, we send out. Um, there's also a photo submission process of folks who really love still wanna submit some beautiful photos of Stowe. So and within the engagement process, we will share like what our plan is, or what our vision is, and you can have your input in that as well. So in terms of schedule, so it's an 18 month process to get from beginning to end. And so we're starting with Stowe yesterday and today, which is where the existing conditions comes in. Stowe tomorrow is really where we achieve getting that feedback and engagement from the community so that we know where we're going. Achieving still tomorrow is where, okay, so this is the feedback we've gotten. Where do we go from here? Let's think about some vision and goals. And then the plan finalized and adopted is like, all right, this is our stamp of approval. This is what we heard from the community. This is where we see still going in the future and where we want it to go. Make sense? Okay. Please feel free to stop me if you can't hear me or <laughs> have any questions. Well, I Quick one, I assume yes. you'll share these uh, slides with it? Yes, we definitely can. So in the website that created we created for this project, this will also be there. Too bad. Yeah. And I guess my other question is, I 
thought part or phase four was going out to the May 2025 town meeting? Um, yes. So, how do I say this? Um, I think that was the, the original intent back in the spring. And so we've, through, through the natural course of like procurement and all of that, the, the current deadline is, or the current estimated end is February 20th. Like, yeah. And this is just a more detailed look at the schedule. So we are here today on the 16th of October to present the kickoff meeting for you. We're actually coming for a community tour on the 30th, which I'm looking forward to. Um, and these are some of the other strategies and pieces that we are working on. So outreach materials, website, publish, survey, other engagement um, tools will be out for the public second week of November, hopefully until the um, first week of December, sort of just to get the, the engagement tools out there. The public engagement and outreach plan, again, that basically tells us Based on who we have here in the board, who are we missing? Is there anyone that doesn't have a connection to a specific community that we might want to talk to? So it gives us, um, shines a light into the, our blind spots, basically, as to who we're missing from the, communi the community or from the conversation, so that we're making sure that this is a holistic um, process that we're getting a lot of feedback for. Um, our meetings, existing conditions, and of course, all the other meetings and everything are here. So as I said, this will be posted on the website. So if you really want to look at it more in detail, we can do that. As I mentioned before, there will be a photo submission. So all of your beautiful stove pictures will be able to be submitted to us um, to be entered into either a summary or to be used on the website. Really, it's a, basically a tool for us to be able to capture the special places that you see for stove. And then these are the upcoming engagement opportunities. So as I mentioned, the project website, the survey, which we will be publishing sometime in November, the photo submission, and then we have our first community forum in January. So that's really one of the first public engagement tools that we have to bring the community together and gather some large pieces of feedback for, um, for the project and for moving forward. Any questions? Yes. Um, something that the questions that were asked didn't quite cover, and I neglected to point out mm -hmm. the other vision that I had of so was diversity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of, I mean, I've never done a comprehensive plan before, so I have no idea how this is done. Yeah. How do we get the input from people that are not in this community to find out what would it take to get them to move into this community? Interesting. So I don't actually know the answer to that question. <laughs> I think it really depends on a lot of things. Um, this process is really taking in the feedback of folks who are already in Stowe. Right. And I think what we want to do is make it so that there are people who are outside of Stowe that want to come in. So how do we do that? Like that might be a goal or strategy that we put into the comprehensive plan. It's like, how do we design a community that is welcoming to folks who are not already in Stowe? So the, yeah. we do also open up our community forums to anybody that wants to come. So whenever there's a sign-in sheet, you can check off a box that says, I've lived in Stowe for 20 mm -hmm. years, I've lived in Stowe for five years, or I work in Stowe, but I don't live in Stowe, mm -hmm. or I'm just visiting for the day, interested in the process and want to see how it goes. So yeah. we definitely aim to, to connect with as many people as we can. Before um, we get to you, Lori, absolutely. The survey is also another tool for that. So. Mm -hmm. The survey is something you can you can um, sort of share with anybody that you know and in the community and outside. And that's some of the questions that we ask are, are you someone who's lived in the community, but you hence have moved since you know growing up or something? Do you work or have a business in town, but you don't actually live here? So there's a way for folks who don't necessarily live in Stowe to be able to provide feedback as well. Hey, uh, I don't know if it's a question or a comment, but um, I have, have worked on voter registration and and um, I have noticed that we do have diversity in town, but it's sort of one sided. Hmm. And I, I don't know you know I don't know how you can go about opening it up yeah. to other people who might, you know, wish to come in town. Yeah, absolutely. So that, again, is a part of how we find our blind spots. So this public engagement opportunity plan 
is really a way for us to say, okay, so what, what are your connections currently? And what do we know exists already in Stowe? Like, are there folks who aren't necessarily in this conversation right now? Um, and again, it's all about what we make of it. So if there are folks who you feel are missing that you want to see participate, then you have to reach out to them and really have them be a part of this. Laurie, go, go ahead. Um, I guess I had a couple of thoughts to that second one too, but I guess one thing I think I had mentioned on my survey too, but I'm part of the reason, I think we, we are growing in our diversity and I think maybe by that also, I think it's important to think about how, how we might have different definitions of diversity. So that's probably important things to talk about. Mm. But yeah. I think one thing too is just that we, because of the history of our country, we are, we're, we're it's somewhat designed that we're this way. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't a product of our choices or our way. Uh, so it feels mm -hmm. like part of what we're thinking we need to do, which I'm just thinking that might be something you bring in as the fence and the guardrails is to help us think about, you know, what are these inherited policies mm -hmm. and historical things that have created, um, you know, the community yeah. that we're in. And, Absolutely. And to consciously think about what might we want to change about those to mm -hmm. make our community a place where um, a wide group of people feel welcome. Absolutely. Um, and I guess that leads me to the other thing around that is that I think, um, um, I've, I'm looking forward to, to hearing from you, you know, sort of how, because there are many different ways for people to feel comfortable or safe, but, and to imagine, like it, mm -hmm. you know, I, if you just come and ask me, okay, what do you want? I don't necessarily know what it might look like to bring people right. together. So, um, so I guess that's another thing that I guess I'm wondering, mm -hmm. imagine what you guys might help break to the yeah. table, but is how are we, you know, how are we creating opportunities so that we can imagine ideas together that we might not have thought of, um, and that recognizing language, mm -hmm. comfort, you know, it's taken me a long time to feel mm -hmm. little speaking in a group like this. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, hey, we're going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I, you know, I think there's a lot of deterrence to people participating, mm -hmm. participating authentically. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, piggybacking yeah. on that, I just, I yeah. hope, um, that's part of, you know, thinking yeah. about what we <clears throat> I appreciate that, Lori. Thank you. So, yeah, definitely a lot of opportunity for us to see really how we get to folks, how we make things comfortable and we don't, you know, sort of stagnate the ability to get feedback from different perspectives. And there's a whole bunch of things like meeting in a box, which we include in our um, public engagement opportunity plan, which is really a way for you to take a meeting wherever you go. If you want to host a meeting at home with some neighbors, you can do that and collect feedback. If you wanted to run your own city or town meeting, you could do that with a meeting in a box. So there's a lot of different things we can do. But I think definitely taking note of that and um, guiding the process is, is what we'll do best. So I, I have a question about yeah. that because uh, as you saw the results with the initial surveys that was done, which um, certainly reflected the opinion of one demographic mm -hmm. and town. And so what I'm wondering is, is our goal to try and bring in enough so that the end result demographics better reflect the town demographics? Yeah. Or how are the, it's, I guess that's really my question because it's going to be very easy, I think, to get feedback from people in one demographic in town like, well, I'm in, mm -hmm. but, you know, I mean, it's that easy. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be harder to sort of more reflect the overall demographic. I mean, if that's what I'm wondering, is that our goal to try and get there? I think that's the best way to approach it, yes. I think if that's where you guys want to go and you want to really see a, a, a really widespread uh, amount of feedback from different populations, different groups, absolutely. So that's part of the PEOP, which is the public engagement plan. Um, and again, it's really about who we have in our circles that we think might be missing or you know how, how widespread we put the word out for our surveys or for our meetings. It's really about this committee and the folks in the community spreading the word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this, these are things that we pair when we're doing the existing conditions profiles, any study that we do of the town, any data that we pull about demographics, housing, family types, family structures. Mm -hmm. If we see in our engagement that we're doing along the process that we're not getting a similar demographic to that of the town as a whole, like we'll mm -hmm. talk about it and perhaps pivot to, to make sure that we're actually getting to talk to more people that might not have been involved in the process yet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think that's part of, as also I'm saying, a picture of who, what, like, who is Stowe, who lives in Stowe, 
um, so that we get a better idea of the community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. So, the best part of this whole meeting is the part where you tell us where you feel like Stowe's special places are and where you think the areas of opportunities live. And so, I'll go more into specifics, but we have our maps on the table. We have some sheets that we will pass out um, and some markers and pens. And so what we want to do is map our special places and then map the, space, the, the opportunity areas and then we'll report out at the end. So for special places, what this really means is, is there an area in Stowe that if it didn't exist, it would really change the character of the community? Is it some place that you would miss if it wasn't there? Or you think that is integral part of Stowe's community and, and history? So that's what special places are. And so we'll have 25 minutes to do this, this um, activity. You'll be using the blue marker to sort of list spaces in the map. And I highly recommend you label your places by like A through Z or one, two, three. Um, and then you, lose, you use the sheet that will pass out to you to sort of explain in more detail what this location is, because we will be mapping it later. <laughs> and for my sake, um, I would love to be able to find your special places and, and put it on the map. So if you could put like, if you have an address, even better. Um, <laughs> but at least the name of the place that I can find to put it in later on. Um, and we'll be doing that also for the opportunity area. So that's sort of what this is about. You'll do that, that part first. And then after we're done with special places, you'll look into doing opportunity places. So this is something, again, that's like, well, I love this part of town, but I feel like it could really use some revamping. Or this place looks a little bit run down. I'd love to get some TLC in this area. Um, so that's sort of what the special or opportunity areas is. Um, again, labeling is super important. Please make sure you label and, and detail on the sheet what you're labeling. Um, and we'll have another 25 minutes to do this. And then lastly, we'll report out on what you did with your group. So we're six people here with two staff. So how about we do two groups of four? and we can work from there. How do we feel about that? Awesome. Cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, that works. All right. Yeah. How was that for everyone? That was fun. Yeah, good. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Fantastic, that's good to hear. <laughs> All right, so who would like to go first to report back on their special places? Oh, I'll, I can all. I will. Awesome, thank <laughs> you. All right, so special places, I kind of went through everything that which not to the ear and thought about that first. I took together quite a few of um, the parts. Um, <clears throat> so we were sort of talking about uh, the, uh, uh, I mean, they're sort of both a special place that I offer to have a small farm, apple seeds, honey pots, Carver Hill, um, uh, uh, and, and then we were talking about uh, also the golf courses, those four golf courses um, that for a lot of people are special places. Those are the two things the town's known for is apples and golf courses. And, True. Um, <clears throat> All those things are sort of opportunities too, or threats as you've been and how you want to look at it. Um, with with Stowe Acres being a really, really good example of how to approach uh, when someone might want to sell one of these properties if it's not restricted, how to approach it in a way that's beneficial to them, like beneficial to us. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just spent a fair amount of time on that, just with just those two big things and saying, um, Go for it. Uh, and I guess it's full of special plates in an opportunity center. You got to do your business fan thing. Mm -hmm. um, nice. And and uh, we also identified uh, Midman Air Teal as a special place, Crow Island down near Lake Thune, and then Lake Thune itself from the Pine Bluff Beach as as special places in town. Um, the National Wildlife Refuge down here, which some of us didn't know about. <laughs> Although I think I did bike through there once. I think I did. Um, and let's see, we mentioned Shelf the Farm, Turk and Fine. Um, <clears throat> the house on uh, on 62, the priest house. Oh, the yellow house. house. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's an excellent historic 
it's on the historic register and it would be um, a fabulous museum because there is many generations of stuff from every family that lived in it, mm -hmm. all the priests. Come. I think it's the like Lisa Burr's the yellow house, the big yellow house. The yeah. big yellow house. It's yeah. a fabulous yeah. yeah. house. Coming up from Hudson. Yeah. I like when uh, uh, March is just, I also have 22 acres. Um, yeah, she's got the dog. Black and she calls and got first. Did a bunch of sister to call this fish to mentor the children. And then we also talked about her. The Delaney Farm Rio. She's up with this for it. Which is just, I mean, basically all the conservation areas were all considered special places. Mm -hmm. It's conservation land, so it's sort of already set. Yeah. Well, the next one's Delaney specifically. So that was. Did I cover it all? I believe so. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. All right. Group one. Um, are we should we, I just focus on special faces? Yes, we're Sorry. just doing focus okay. special okay. faces first. <laughs> um, that's interesting. I think that we also had the same theme, but kind of pulled out some, some different places too. Um, so we were talking a lot about um, the the scenic vistas the properties that make so feel rural or have some connection to um an agricultural heritage um so the farms um uh perkins farm in uh leesonville even um though not agricultural necessarily um a bit of crops i should say um small farm um pilot grove farm yeah um we also talked a lot about the the land that has walking trails um, and how that that can be a good place to meet your neighbors and to have some of that human connection as well as connection to um to the woods or to space and place um we talked also about just the location of stowe the proximity to west acton to that commuter rail there um the proximity to other rail trails in the area um we talked about a lot of different water bodies um the Assabet river the um heath hen meadow brook um can think you know i think that was about about all for special places other than i mean the the centers we talked about the villages as well so um tau center gleason tail village is being special Fantastic. Thank you. Did you include the late? Yes. Yes, we did. Our same group. It's time to assume that I'll just thank Yes, yeah. Alrighty. Group two, your opportunity areas. Well, some of it's sort of the giant of that said we looked at the golf course. It's a kind of so it's Nathan Whiteford, Barnard, um, and Stowaway. Stowaway could be already sitting there on. There are opportunities. Uh, it's also uh, maybe it's an opportunity for us to try and hopefully be proactive, so we know what's going on with the ownership, so we know if and when they're doing something, uh, and then hope that they're as receptive as the still acres keep work. Um, there's both, which is the single biggest tax fee with fair in the town, mm -hmm. and has been for sale for several years now. Um, I don't know if it's an opportunity, but it's something. Um, uh, lower Village is a huge opportunity. Then the, uh, the car lot on the other side of 117 is something. It's an opportunity maybe for development. Um, Lisa Neal Mill is another potential opportunity, um, hopefully. Um, so Kaylin, which is up by the high the mill. That sounds here also. So that I I I think we said that is that in not for Spurkin land that's Burleville. Not the milk. Um and then a couple of other things we talked about were uh, maybe there are sort of issues as much as our opportunity that we want to think about. We're one seventeen fractal. Um the need maybe for a traffic light downtown. Yeah. Uh, uh, in terms of turning left, doing trying to turn out of anywhere in the eight at the during rush hour, any bad. Um, Hudson Road intersection really needs a turn lane. Um, the Lions Club partial is across the street from that area, it gets its limited usage, but it's there, it's flat, and it's empty. Um, 
that we talked about a couple of buildings that probably are going to need some work coming up, uh, the Hill Middle School and the Town Hall, Yale's Town Hall. Um, and uh, uh, we also highlighted the Complete Streets Project downtown as something that's an opportunity to continue to, to build out to make it possible for people to walk, bike, bike. get together. Um, and that certainly goes with whatever happens in terms of development with Lower Village. And, and, uh, uh, and, and then finally, uh, possibility of uh, a bike, bicycle paths or bike lanes on Route 62 coming up from, from south, you know, up, up into the center of town. Kids ride their bike to school there, um, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So that, those are the things that we thought about in terms of opportunities. We kind of focused on spaces that are sizable spaces in town. A lot of them are already owned by South Korea, but thanks, dang it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlie. Good job, group two. <laughs> group one. I, we said a lot of the same things. I think we actually probably touched on each of those. Um, we, it's interesting, we actually did not mention vehicular traffic, but we talked about um, pedestrian and bicycle connectivity, mm -hmm. specifically between um, town center and lower village. Um, and then we also did the same review of large parcels of land that could be developed. So uh, off of um, the top of Wedgwood Road or uh, food. I think that's also when we're talking about Gates Lane. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bose property, um, concern for Pilot Grove Farm not being um, protected, as well as the, the Stowaway Golf Course also not being protected. Um, we, we did mention the Minuteman Airfield as, a, as an opportunity. Um, so it's, it's not only an airfield, it also has um, many businesses um, within within those hangars and within those structures. So even a new restaurant was just put mm -hmm. in there um, a month back or eight months ago. Um, so we know that that owner is, is is working to to fill out those spaces, but it could be an opportunity to work with them further on that. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I'll just put another plug for the Gleasondale Mill. Um, I mean, we have the, the 2014 revitalization plan. Uh, but I think, I think that that is still, um, that still resonates with, uh, with the residents down there. So this, it's an opportunity. Great. Good job. Good yeah, one. That would be a stunned thing that I don't know the name for it, but maybe it got, so we, we put down as our um, like, you know, the, the lengthy bike trail that comes, it starts, I guess, at, uh, uh, behind um, uh, the mayor of station mm -hmm. at West Acton. And then it runs down through the town forest, then it goes through Manatee, and then it comes down and gets to Route 62 down in that Gleasondale area. And my, my son and I did this one day, and when I realized you were going to have to go on to I should have thought of this when you met here. It's like it takes your life in your hand to ride the bike down there on Route 62. It's not the very long, but then it reconnects with Mayor, and then I think it goes all the way down to Marlborough. Still, yes, so we have this like the this rail little trail. stretch. Yeah, 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 the rail trail. We have this little stretch in Stowe that is really scary. So I guess that's an opportunity. I guess the opportunity would be can we figure out when it flows the gap in the rail trail. <laughs> I should have mentioned that that the whole rail trail is red on our on our <laughs> We did one yeah, seventeen in the rail trail conversation. As long as it's red somewhere, that'd be great. <laughs> we, um, <laughs> the the rail trail problem in Stowe is um, multiple. It's basically a funny thought. It did. We just mm -hmm. it, our discussion was wouldn't it be exciting yeah. if yeah. The rail trail could be another means in there so that because cars are so locked and absolutely it would be great if the rail trail was when i go in pause yeah so they so, try well try thinking that what idea is to to it's propose to that uh, for not even our business along the rail trail specific this is what we don't have which could possibly i just love it actually put some work that i can just well, add it to a while later offering opportunity to cyclists and to their friends. 
then sort of asked the way, way to, to limit their blood care for sea flyability. To... What would be the real trail is their main thoroughfare for the tractors and stuff to move stuff to live on the orchard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not the wrong opportunity. If we just build a bridge or a little thing. Yeah. <laughs> Flyway, like the deep part. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, you did amazing. Thank you so very much for participating in this activity. Um, any questions, last words you sort of want to add in before we move on? No? Great. Well, I appreciate you all coming out on a Monday night for a two hour meeting. That's not an easy feat. So I wanna give you kudos for that. Um, that's pretty much all of what we had prepared for tonight. So Thank if you, you so of course, Thank my you. pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for coming out. Oh my, <laughs> <laughs> my, I'm happy to. Um, we, well, Mallory and Mike will have our contact information. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. There's also um, brochures on the table if you wanted to grab one that describes what we do, our work, um, our, all that kind of stuff. So we have a, a way to get in touch with us, but we do have another meeting coming up. I'm forgetting the exact date, but it will be on the website and Valerie and Michael have those dates as well. Um, and we'll do a different activity similar to this one to just get more information from you all about Stowe and what you would like to see. So I look Hi. forward to seeing that. That's kidding me. Yeah. No, no, I'm done. <laughs> uh, I. Particularly, I worked on the, I was on the 2010 Asher Plane Committee, and I can't tell you how wonderful it is to have a group like you helping us. Oh, good. It was, we wasted so much time trying to, to do all these sorts of mm -hmm. things, and we didn't have anybody who could help us. Good. And well, I'm glad we're here. So, <laughs> it's great. It's great. Thank you. Of course, my pleasure. It's good to work with folks who are really engaged in the community and, and really want to move forward for this. So, and it's a two way. I